As their name implies, sequence diagrams are great at showing interactions in sequence, showing the order in which messages get sent and interactions take place among various participants. Very often, however, whether you're talking about business processes or whether you're talking about computer systems, things happen in parallel. It's not always one interaction after another, after another, after another. Things can happen, messages can get sent at the same time. Now, if you've been thinking about the possibilities of interaction frames, you've probably already realized that they're very useful for showing tasks or processes that happen in parallel. Let's take a look at a very simple example to illustrate this. Let's say we've got a control that's thermostat, and we have another participant, and we'll call that the furnace. And let's say that the controller sends the furnace a message, heat house. Now when the furnace receives that message, the furnace is going to do a couple of things at the same time. It's going to send itself two messages. One is turn on flames, and the other is turn on fan. And it's going to be doing those things at the same time, or else it won't be able to send the return message back to the thermostat about the warm house. Uh, let's extend our activator bars here so that we can see that these participants are active throughout this whole exchange. Activator bars, by the way, are optional. You don't have to include them necessarily, and some people prefer not to because they feel that it clutters up the diagram or gives information that people are worried about that they don't really need to focus on. However, it's entirely up to you whichever style you prefer, whether you want to include them or not. But what we do want to make sure that we do here is show that these two messages are sent to the furnace by itself at the same time. Uh, if you notice, Visual Paradigm automatically adds numbers to the messages in a sequence diagram according to the order in which you uh, put those messages into your diagram. So without some kind of interaction frame to show a fragment where things happen in parallel, this diagram implies that this happens first, this happens second, this happens third, this happens fourth. Right now there's no way to show that these two things could happen at the same time. So the interaction frame that you use to show things in parallel is very similar to the alternative interaction frame. Now here it's asking us again which participants uh, come into play, which participants need to be framed by the interaction frame, and this just involves the furnace. And there's our frame. Let's expand it a little so it includes what it's meant to include. And as I said, you notice that this interaction frame looks very similar to the alternative interaction frame. It has two sections divided by a dashed line. The main difference will be that in the operator, and also when you're talking about alternatives, as you'll recall, the operands in an alternative interaction frame are mutually exclusive. They can't happen at the same time. So you need to add guard conditions to an alternative interaction frame, but you don't need those guard conditions for a parallel interaction frame because there are no guard conditions. This happens in one case, this happens in a different case. They both happen at the same time, so no guard conditions needed. You do, however, need to show that your operator is parallel, P-A-R, instead of alternative. So now you see it's quite clear in the diagram how this works. The thermostat sends the heat house message. The furnace sends these two messages to itself in parallel, and then it can return to the thermostat that the house is warm. So use parallel when you have messages that are being sent or interactions that are taking place simultaneously.